All right, guys, another day, another impossible to get Kobe release. But hey, that's Mamba. Yo, what's good guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official weartesters.com YouTube channel. Today we got a detailed look at breakdown on a shoe that most people probably were unable to get at retail. If you were, congratulations. Hopefully you are grabbing them for the right reasons, but to each his own, you can do what you want with your product. But this is the Nike Kobe 4 Pro Tro, and it's a brand new colorway and a brand new look. The shoe reminds me of a couple of things. The first is actually my very first pair of Air Jordan 3s, believe it or not. They just remind me of the Black Cat 3s, which we just heard are coming back. <laughs> And on top of that, they also remind me of the pair that I played in and beat a complete sh way back in the day when they originally released. It was the Minneapolis colorway. The upper is what really reminds me of those, just the materials and stuff. But before we get into the shoes, After these messages, we'll be right back. If you wanted to know our thoughts on the latest sneaker news, well, we've got good news for you because there's a podcast for that. If you wanted to know Chris's thoughts on the latest nerd sh there's a podcast for that. If you wanted to listen to Mrs. Wing tell really weird stories and maybe learn something new for the day, there's a podcast for that. You can find the Wear Testers Unlaced podcast, also known as the Pop Culture Podcast, available now on all streaming networks, including right here on our YouTube channel. It uploads every Saturday, so yes, we're making Saturday mornings great again. Now, just in case you're curious, uh, just like the previous release, the Reverse Grinches, they do come in the brand new scaled out box. Um, it's pretty interesting because if you go all the way back to the original Kobe 6s, scaled boxes. Obviously they're a little bit different. These ones are a little bit cleaner, I think. So in case you're curious, it looks like that's the Kobe box moving forward. Now, as far as the Kobe 4 is concerned, the original product released way back in 2008. They ran all the way throughout 2009. Uh, it's one of the best basketball shoes of all time, if you're asking me at least. And I've played in a lot of basketball shoes over the years, and these guys right here are still just top tier. The designer's Eric Avar. He still works for the brand. So in case you're curious, there you go. And this particular colorway is called the Gift of Mamba. And again, they gave you the gift of not being able to get them. So that's awesome. Anyways, these things are badass. They're very nice. It might be one of the nicest Kobe 4s that I personally have seen and held in hand. The materials on these things are just phenomenal. But we're going to start off with the outside. So per usual, this one, you can't actually see how cool it actually looks. You can normally see that with all the other colored versions or different colorways. This one kind of has like this shattered look throughout the traction pattern and stuff, which I just always have loved. I thought that it was really cool. I think that a good outsole design like really elevates a sneaker. I know that it has nothing to do with what you actually see, like when you're walking this way or when you look at it from a toe down view, but something about being on a poster. I don't know if this is for everybody, but just as a kid, I just would love seeing the posters and then the outsoles of the shoes. The outsoles are so iconic to me that it's just like, damn, it's awesome. However, the pattern itself, it's herringbone and it's everywhere, it's aggressive. This was one of the first shoes when I started reviewing shoes that had a truly aggressive pattern where the pattern was the outsole. Normally, if you kind of like look at this uh, lateral side right here where the outrigger's at, you can see that it's smooth and then the traction is like recessed within that. And then when you go over to the medial side where it starts to wrap around the foot, it's just straight traction everywhere and that's the aggressive shit. And then since this, you know, majority of traction patterns, not all of them, but the majority of them have been done like that where it's like oh no we're not going to recess the pattern in there the whole outsole is going to be the pattern and i think that that's why some of these shoes nowadays are just so good as far as grip goes because they've kind of learned that you know what i mean like over the years they're like oh more traction more court coverage equals awesome performance and it really started with this shoe a lot of stuff started with this shoe man this shoe is so good it's awesome now in addition to the aggressive herringbone outsole we've got a glass based carbon fiber shank right there at the midfoot just to kind of prevent over twisting of the midfoot area that's really Really all it's meant for. It doesn't extend into the forefoot area and restrict movement or anything. So again, just isolated that midfoot section for isolated midfoot torsion rigidity. The midsole itself, at least according to Nike, is just a foam midsole. But real descriptive, guys. What I believe it is, is just Phylon. I remember when the Pro Tros, it was actually these guys right here. This is the first Pro Tro of the fours to launch. They sat on shelves. They didn't sell out or anything like that, like they do nowadays, unfortunately. But they were described to have had, in their own description, full length length zoom air just like the kobe one pro tro uh, that ended up not being the case it is just a straight up foam midsole with a heel zoom unit which was 
super disappointing to so many people because that Kobe 1 Pro Troll really started off with a bang. They really morphed that shoe, like the inside, into something that was just an incredible on-court performer, uh, slightly elevated, if you will, compared to the original. Was that done with the Pro Troll 4 and every Pro Tro, you know, released afterwards? That's up for debate. I personally don't think so. I don't think that they're truly upgraded like they should be. Now, the original Kobe 4 actually had a dual setup as far as the cushion is concerned. So it still had a lightweight Phylon midsole and it still had that heel zoom unit. But in the forefoot, there was a thin pad of what they call Lunar Lawn. The Lunar Lawn just isn't durable. Like Lunar was one of those things that was kind of disappointing, kind of like React when it was introduced into basketball. The running stuff is really cool and it's really resilient and it's amazing underfoot, especially while in motion. The basketball versions though, like they really have to subdue stuff to make it stable because otherwise you have like ankle instability issues and stuff. And so uh, when they do that, you kind of almost sacrifice the entire integrity of the original intent of the product. So again, instead of having a full lunar midsole, which is what a lot of runners were seeing with their running products, or at least the ones that featured lunar, in the basketball product, it was like a thin little just pad, like literally just a little pad of lunar foam. Some people really disliked that because they said that it bottomed out really quickly, which it did. I personally felt that it molded to my foot a little bit, so I kind of liked it. Now, as far as the upper is concerned, that's where this shoe right here, or this version of the shoe really elevates everything. I did not get any of the fade to black stuff or any of the prelude stuff and things like that, which I know that some of them had more elevated materials than their general release pairs. But this is my first version of this shoe like this. So I think that this is just really cool. This is kind of what I wish that the original product had like alternate versions of. So the original version of the shoe right here featured a lot of synthetic leathers, which is what you see on the forefoot, the tongue, as well as the heel. And then the midfoot section was all this first gen flywire stuff. This guy replaces all that with premium everything. So again, that's why this reminds me more of the pair that I actually played in, which was the Minneapolis colorway. That one was all new buck and it was awesome. They still had the flywire midfoot panel and everything, but the rest of the shoe was just so good. It was one of my favorite shoes ever. So what they've done with the upper is again, they put premium materials pretty much everywhere except the tongue. The tongue is the one area where that's still a synthetic nubuck, but all of the underlay materials, that midfoot and the toe area is a really nice nubuck material. And then all of the overlays that you see as far as the scales are concerned, the scale panels, that's actually a suede, which is really neat because it gives this really weird, glossy, actual reptilian scale-like visual. And uh, I think the reason or the, the way that they were able to kind of do that is by heat pressing the pattern into it. So it kind of like melted some of the hair fibers, you know what I mean? So like, it just looks rough in some areas and shiny or silky in others. It just is such a weird look. It's it's really cool. The insole is nothing to write home about. So if you're looking to play in these things, you can leave it as is, you'll be fine. But if you wanted to take that out and replace it with anything else, feel free. It's just a cheap ortholite. If you don't know about ortholite, ortholite, it's got a variation of insoles. They're all different kinds. Some are great, some of them are cheap and kind of like what Nike uses. Oh. Now the heel counter is one of the greatest features on this shoe outside of just the overall package. Uh, you've got a really nice heel counter that keeps the heel locked into place, which is what made this low top so playable and it was such a game changer at the time. I had been playing in low tops for a number of years. Sometimes they were great, sometimes they fit real sloppy. And so like I, I'd have like issues with certain shoes. The Jordan 21 lows jump out at me at least as like one of the weird ones where the fit was so awkward that sometimes my heel would pop out of the shoe. You know what I mean? And it was just, it wasn't great. This shoe though, really fine tuned like low tops in general. And that heel counter right there was a huge aspect of that where it wasn't just internal, it was external as well. So it doubled up the support there and really enclosed that heel area to make sure that it was secured and locked down. It's awesome. And it, it also like looks different on each pair. So this one right here is just straight up all black, the left shoe, but the right shoe has Kobe's signature right there and it's done up in gold. It looks amazing. As far as fit is concerned with Kobe fours, you should go true to size. I think that that fits most people well, including wide footers. When you have something like this, where it's kind of leathery up at the forefoot, just give it some time to break in. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to go up half a size in everything. You just have to give time to the product. You gotta wear it and stuff. I know that it can be suffocating at first. I get it, but you gotta put some love into these things. Otherwise you're gonna have heel slip issues and stuff. Your heel's gonna pop out because they're too long. The shoe's not doing its job. You're gonna blame the shoe, but it's not the shoe's fault you just didn't get your size right. So true to size, you should be good to go. And again, this is an amazing on-court performer, one of the best ever. And hopefully everybody that grabbed a pair is able to actually use them for that. Although I will say that this one's so nice that like feels like kind of like a dress shoe. Not a dress shoe, but a casual shoe. This is a dress shoe for me, <laughs> okay? This is a dress shoe for me. This, I don't like them 
hard bottoms things at all. So if I was going to a wedding, I'd wear this if they'd let me. My brother didn't. My other brother did. And with that being said, we greatly appreciate you guys once again for being here. We will catch you on the next one. So until then, have a good one. Okay, so we changed the mic placement. Okay, apparently it's been sounding a little weird anytime I look that way. <sighs> Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy Holidays. I'm sorry. <laughs>